I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at the power of VCA faders and exactly how they can be used in slightly more advanced mixer environments within Logic Pro. What I've got here is a track which has been organized into track stacks. One for low percussion, one for mid percussion, one for top percussion, one for synths, and one for strings. Let's just have a listen to it before we go any further. Okay, now what I've decided is that I'd like all of the drums within this project to be louder than they currently are. Now you might think, fine, no problem, just find the faders for those track stacks and turn them all up. But it isn't quite as straightforward as that. My mix has already evolved and become a bit more complicated. If I open up automation, I can see that actually the three stems or the three track stacks that make up the percussion parts have all got different automation data on them already. So in other words, this low percussion part starts quietly and then it's loud for the second half. The second mid percussion part uh, sort of ramps up through the first section and then it's loud and then it boosts again at the end. Whereas the top loop, which is busy and loud at the beginning, then drops away in volume here before um, coming back in more strongly and crescendoing to the end. So if I want all of the drums to be louder overall, I either have to reprogram all of the automation, changing all of those lines and trying to remember how much I've boosted them all by, or I need to find another way of being able to control their volume relative to the rest of the mix. And this is where VCA faders can play a role. What I'm going to do is to open up the mixer within my project, and what we'll see is that I've only got five tracks, because of course all of these tracks represent the track stacks into which I folded down my project. And what I want to do is to select the low percussion, the mid percussion, and the top percussion. I'm doing that by holding that shift button whilst clicking on those individual track stacks. And having selected them, what I'm then going to do is to control click anywhere where it's gray, just somewhere away from any of the main buttons. And what I'm going to do is to create what's called a new VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. And this is going to provide me with a fader. And this fader, I can see straight away, Logic has assigned this new little area within the mixer to show me that these tracks are assigned to this VCA. And what I'm going to do is to call this drum volume. And what this fader is now going to let me do is to control this um, the, the volume of all of these individual tracks. So to be clear, what that means is that if I move this fader, I'm not going to see these faders changing. But what this value shows me is that if I turn it up, let's say two decibels, all of the volume of the sounds being sent to that VCA are going to get boosted by 2 dB. Equally, if I want to, I could turn them down. So this one fader is effectively almost like a group fader. We've got this controlling the individual track stacks which are being sent to this fader. So I'll show you what I mean. If I solo this, it stands to reason that the only sounds I'll be able to hear are the drums. So we shouldn't hear any of the strings or any of the synths. And it also stands to reason that if I turn the fader down, all of the drums get quieter, and if I turn it up, they'll get louder. So this is a really easy way for me to be able to say, okay, I want all of my drums just to have this offset from a volume point of view, which makes them louder than the other parts within the mix. And the part that goes even further is that if I want to, I could even add this VCA fader to my project so that I could even automate it. So in other words, if I want an overall 2 dB volume rise, but maybe right at the end where everything gets much louder, I wanna make sure that I'm just pulling things back in a little bit, I can add a further lane of automation, this time for the VCA fader. And the way that I can do that is to click here, and what I can do is I can uh, create a track for this fader. And what that's going to do is to add it to my project. I'll put it right up here at the top so that we can see that it's controlling the sounds overall underneath it. And we can see that the value where I set that fader, 2 dB, is currently selected as the overall volume. So what I can do here, where this final fill happens, where I've pushed the volume maybe a little bit too much, 
is that maybe what I could do would be to just pull the volume down on that VCA fader a little bit at the end, just so we're back pretty much to where we started. So effectively, this is a new automation line, which is controlling the overall volume of the drums. So let's come back out of solo mode. We'll hear the mix again, and this time the drums should be louder all the way through until the very last moment where they're basically back to where they started. Okay, so in the context of those drums getting louder right at the end, it's quite hard to hear that because it's a pretty subtle change. So a more straightforward way of being able to demonstrate just exactly how this VCA fader works is that we could use it to fade out all of the drums from bar 15 onwards. So we can hear those synth sequences continuing, but the drums are gone by the end. So what this allows us to do, and what we've seen within this video, is exactly how we can use a VCA fader. What we did was to take the three track stacks that constitute the percussion parts within this project, and we assigned them to a VCA fader within the mixer. And then what we did was to realize that that fader gives us control over the volume of all of those parts. And what we did then was to assign that VCA to our project, so that we could actually make that global control for the percussion volume something that we could actually automate within our project, either to create a fade out like this, or just to gently manage the overall volume of a group of sounds within a mix at the same time.